Rest beyond the river near the cross of Lamboco. In the scenes before me, there are the bright and morning star sheds its beams around me in the cross in the cross be my glory ever heal my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river near the cross I'll watch and praise hoping trusting ever till I reach the golden strand just beyond the river in the cross in the cross be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river let us pray as we start the fellowship almighty god our heavenly father we come before you with our hearts full of blessings full of thanksgiving for all that you're doing for our lives for making us your sons and daughters, for redeeming us from the shame of sin and helping us, Father, dear Lord, to be born in this word, Father. Dear Lord, I thank you for your great victory in our lives. I thank you for the great power that you've given us by you taking residence inside man for this day, Father. I invite you, God, to have control over this meeting I pray that you may bless each and everyone that is here. Those that have forgotten to join in, I pray that you may remind them, oh Father, and that Father, dear Lord, that you may help us to have the anointing that the prophet had when he was bringing this message. I ask you, Father, dear Lord, to forgive us from our trespasses. Dear Lord, we live in flesh that fall daily. I ask you, Father, to redeem us from our shortcomings, oh Heavenly Father. Make us your sons, make us worthy for this fellowship. And dear Lord, when we come to an end with a successful end, all the praise and honor shall be unto your name. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Thank you, brothers, uh, that have joined in. May God bless you all. And I want to welcome every one of you in this fellowship. And greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you, Brother Anand. God bless you, Brother Joseph. I'm happy to see you in. And shall Thank you. Amen, amen. Amen. Our Lord is helping us to get along with the study of the Battle of the Armageddon. And we want to understand where the prophet is coming from and how the prophet taught it so that we can know which promises are revealed, which promises are fulfilled, and which promises are we waiting for them to be fulfilled. And we just want to do a small recap from where we started last time. We began by showing that God has a plan in his unveiling 
And in his plan, he becomes his own interpreter. That God does not need ministers to interpret his word. God does not need prophets to interpret his word. God is his own interpreter. And when God speaks, then that becomes the word of the Lord, becomes that says the Lord. That becomes our way of life. That becomes a fulfillment in our lives that indeed God has spoken and he has brought us to the realization of the promises of our day. And he says, do not misinterpret the scripture. He says again, do not dislocate the scripture. And again, he says, do not uh, misplace the scripture. In all this, he says, that as a minister who is studying the word of the Lord, you have to know how to rightly divide the word, to know which word applies for which day, which word has been fulfilled, which portion is waiting for the fulfillment, and which part belongs to you. You remember when Jesus came, the whole testament was is a book of about 39 books, as it is, as it was canonized, about 39 books. But when Jesus came and he was given the scroll to read, he only went to the scripture of Isaiah that pertained to him, the scripture that spoke of his day, the scripture whose life was being manifested when the Messiah was there on the land. And that is where Jesus read. Remember when Brother Branham came, he does not take us any way farther. He goes to the book of Malachi chapter 4 because that is a scripture that pertains to his day. He takes us to Luke chapter 17 verse 30 because that is a scripture that pertains to him. He takes us again to the scripture of Revelation chapter 7 and verse 10 because that is a scripture that pertains to him. You see, because we have to apply scripture even as life is being carried in this scripture, even as life is being made manifest in this particular scripture. And may the Lord help us, even as we study this subject of the battle of Armageddon, so that we may not apply things that are of the day that are past to this day that we are living in today. Now, our Lord has been faithful and we began by laying a foundation. We saw this battle of Armageddon began in heaven. And in heaven, it was between two sides, the side of Lucifer, the morning star, and the other side was the side of uh, Michael. And this battle, Michael won and Lucifer, together with uh, three quarters of the angels in the heaven, they were thrown out of heaven and they dwell here on earth. They came straight to the garden of Eden. Now that the prophet says, oh, unto the dwellers of the earth, because all these demons have taken possession in the earth. Now, the question is, where is this heaven? All right, we are talking about heaven. Now, you have to understand that heaven is a dimension. Heaven is not a geographical place in the cloud somewhere. And once you have that understanding, you will know that we are speaking on spiritual things here, supernatural things. So they came right into the Eden. And uh, Lucifer, when he came to Eden, and they, the, the battle started on again. And, the, the, uh, and, and Michael lost the battle at the Garden of Eden. The prophet tells us that the battle was lost at the Garden of Eden because one of the soldiers of God let down the bars of the word. And that's what happens. When Eve let down the bars of the word, then God lost that battle at the Garden of Eden. That's what happens when, uh, when, 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 one of, um, when one of the soldiers of God let down the bars. The battle was lost at the Garden of Eden because one person disbelieved one word. And that's what happens even today. When you start misinterpreting the scripture, applying scripture to another 
day, dislocating the scripture, then that's how you lose the that's how you lose the battle. All right. And then from the Garden of Eden, it has been a battle since then. There was the tree of life of good and evil, uh, and there was another life uh, tree of good and evil. And there was Cain and there was Abel. And then it was Cain and Seth. And then it came on again. The two trees coming together, the righteous line and the line of uh, of God uh, and the line of, of, of the unrighteous. And we see God trying to eliminate the seed at the floods of Noah. And then the seed manages to cross over. That's what prophet teaches in the book of serpent seed. And then it comes again, we see, and then we see in Jacob and Esau, and then it come again, it carries on all the way it winds up in Jesus and Judas. Does it get eliminated? No, it comes again to the seven church ages where we have the bride, the word bride, and then we have the creed. And then from this, the prophecy, the seven church ages is like a womb, a womb that has two children and they are fighting, waiting for the day of deliverance. Just as the way Perez and Zerah were fighting in the womb of Tamar, waiting for the deliverance, the two sons of Judah. Just as the way the sons of Rebekah, uh, the sons of, 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 of Isaac, Jacob and, 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 and Esau, they're fighting in that womb, waiting for deliverance. And then at the end of the seven church ages is when now the battle come to a finality, where now there is no full deliverance now. The prophet says that this battle, when it comes to an end, that we see one side mobilizing, one side, which is the side of the Antichrist. The prophet reveals a mystery there. He says that the Antichrist, he has his bride that is formed by the creeds, that is formed by the misinterpretation of the word, that is formed by that truth that is 99%, 0.99%, .99%, all right? And he says, the Antichrist gathers his troops, he gathers his soldiers, he gathers his bride from the four corners of the world, all right? From the political divide, from the religious divide, from the demonic power divide. All this, he says, he came up in the four, in the three horses. And we find the first horse was the white horse rider. Then we find he was still mobilizing by the white horse rider because that is where the spirit of iniquity was at work. He was still mobilizing his bride when the red horse rider was on, on the land. He was still mobilizing when the black horse rider was on the land. And, on the, and, and when he realized all this has become difficult, he mixes up the colors. You right. Originally, there are three colors, and then he mixes them all together. He becomes a pale horse rider. Praise the name of the living God. And then now there is this other side now, the side of Christ. All right. One side is the Antichrist. He has his own bride. And then we have the side of Christ. And then the prophet says he gathers his bride, not on the earth, but from the heaven. Amen. From the heaven, these sons and daughters of God that are born from heaven. Now, remember, the prophet said that when you are born as a son of God, you are born from heaven. Amen. You are born from heaven, not on earth. You are born from heaven. You become a heavenly baby. A spiritual baby. Now remember, we are engaging in a spiritual war, not a physical war. Armageddon is a spiritual war. And these, when God is marshalling his troops, when Christ is marshalling his troops, he is gathering them in the seven church ages from the heaven. These are born in heaven. When you are born again, you are born in heaven. A spiritual baby born in heaven. Now you start asking me, where was that? 
how did you come into heaven? How are you born into heaven and you're sitting here? Pay attention to the details of the prophet. It is a supernatural battle, supernatural devils, and we, it is a fight waging between the, 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 the Antichrist and his bride, and Christ and his bride. Now, we left it at that the other time. Let us now proceed and see what the prophets say. The message of the false seal, paragraph 321, he says, here we see, right? The two sides are clear now. Life and death coming to the final struggle. Now, remember, this is the end of this battle of Armageddon. The white horse of the true life, the pale horse of the mixed creed. You see, the thing coming to a real showdown. Now, I want to say something here. You might not believe this, but I looked it up to be sure. There is only one original color, and that is white. Now, you remember when we were teaching the seven church ages with the seven coats, uh, with, this, with the coat of many colors, the coat that was given to Joseph, it had seven colors, the same, same coat, which represented the covenant between Jacob and, and, and Joseph. And here again, Jesus, he was given like by his father, a coat of many colors. That was the seven colors of redemption, which is the seven church ages, the covenant between Christ and the church, all right? Uh, that covenant, the prophet says it is seven colors. And when you mix these seven colors, it produces one color, which is white, all right? The seven church age color, it is white color. Those seven rainbow colors, it is produced from a white color. When you mix them back together, it produces a white color. How many knows that? There is only one original color, and that is the color of Christ. Anything else is mixed. Christ is on solid, white and adulterated word from the beginning. Amen. Every color will be white if chemistry hadn't been broken into it. Amen. Glory. Even the church will be standing on the apostolic doctrine of the word of God and confirming it if it didn't have the creeds and denomination mixed into it. There you are. Paragraph 325. And remember, his saints are clothed in the white robe. All right? He's, he's carrying a white word. He is carrying white word. And then he says, his saints are clothed with the white robes, not mixed with the denominations and creeds. Now we find out that the denominations and the creeds, here you get your mixed colors. There is only one original color. He's riding the original colors on his people. They are dipped, been dipped in the blood and cleansed. That garment and sent right back yonder, you see? Now, those that mix pale go to death, all right? They are mixed with what? We have only one, one color, which is the word, which is white color, pure color. And there is another color, which is mixed up. Now, you remember when you study the seven church ages, the prophet will tell you how this other side is mixed up. It begins by a white color comes on to a, a red color, comes on to again a, bl a black color. Now it is mixed into a pale color, all right? And it is perversion to mix colors. You pervert the original color. The original color, only color, it is white. When you mix it, it becomes something else. It, you pervert the color. And no matter how good that is, Truth and error cannot mix. When you start mixing the word of God, then you are no longer in the word of God. You are in a creed. But it is either thus says the Lord, listen, either thus says the Lord, or it is wrong. Let me tell you, even in the revelation, don't be too fast with what you, what you claim to be revelation. It has to be right matching with the word of God, or it is wrong. That is the precedence that we are having here. 
No matter what Holy Father say, St. Boniface or Archbishop or what, whatever they say, anything contrary to the word is, is perversion. Paragraph 334, he says, and here comes Satan with all the four corners of the earth, with his Protestants, with his Catholics. Oh, can you see the bride of Satan? Can you see the bride of Antichrist? Now, I'm not the one who is saying. The leader of this group is Satan himself. What does he say? Here comes Satan with all the four corners of the earth, with his Protestants, with his Catholics, all together marching right up to the battle of Armageddon. Can you see that? All right. And here comes Jesus from heaven with resurrected saints, vindicated word, as I say, if God speaks and sends you, he backs up what he says. Notice, if you're an ambassador from heaven, all heaven is behind you and heaven is consisted of the word. Can you say an amen to that? Amen. Amen. When you are born of God, when you are born of heaven, when a minister stands in a pulpit to bring the word, all heaven is behind him. When you are in your workplace, let me make it even much real to you. When you are in your workplace and you stand for the full word of God, leave about the compromises. We are speaking about serious Christians who have prayed enough, people that are convicted and born again in this kingdom. In this covenant, they are in this covenant with God. All heaven is behind you. When you are living there, in, um, your neighbors are around you. You are living in a neighborhood. All the heavens is behind you because you are an ambassador, a witness that heaven is still existing, that God is living in his word. That is what happens. When you are in that car going to work, when you are in that matatu bus or a train or even, or even in an air, air, airplane, God and the whole host of heaven is behind you because you are an ambassador of heaven and God will back up whatever you say. Praise the name of the living God. All heaven is consisted of the, of the word. Amen. What is heaven? Consisting, of, heaven is word. Where you are in the word, you are in heaven. Are you getting that? When you are out of the word, you are out of boundaries of the word. It is a time when you are either in the word, either you are in heaven or you are in something else. Paragraph 89, the uniting time and sign. Notice, they are right now uniting. Yes, gathering. Now you hear of the World Economic Council of Churches. Yes, they started at Nicaea and they are now uniting. When Brother Branham was speaking, yes. Why are they writing? Listen to me. Why are they writing an agreement of World Council of Churches? including Catholics, Protestants, Methodists, the Baptists, all under one document. Why are they uniting? Because they are united for this battle, for this showdown, for this, for this showdown. Listen, they are coming to the battle of Armageddon. Here is the prophet, your prophet saying, now, I'm not the one saying, if I misquote anything, you have the right to stop me and tell me, Brother Joshua, we love you so much, but what you're saying is not the prophet. But here we are quoting what the prophet says, they are coming for what? Exactly. And they are uniting for that now. That's what, now listen, this is on spiritual power, the denominational power. That is on one side. The Antichrist gathering is on one side. What is the other one? Political power. Let us see here. They are uniting for that right now. 
That's why we got the UN, the United Nations. Yes, this is another side. The Western world uniting against the Eastern world, communism and so forth. All together, the churches are uniting together. Everything seems to be united, uniting, uniting themselves together. We see that. Also, while all this uniting of the nation, these signs, national signs, we see out here in the world, earthquakes, divers, bringing the world together. Yes, you remember when COVID was on this earth, what happened? All the world was coming together. Let us come together. What is the WHO saying? Let us quarantine. Let us do this. Coming together. Uniting. It's been going on. There is another uniting going on. Amen. And while this uniting is going on, listen. Amen. While this uniting is going on, there is another uniting going on. Amen. That's what I'm pointing you to now. Brother Anand, that's what I'm pointing you to now. Amen. While this Amen. is happening in the the demonic, the demonic power and the, and the spiritual ones, as they are uniting, there is another uniting happening. Praise the name of the living God. Now, we are shifting gears a little bit, and I want you to follow. Notice now exactly the continuity of the scripture, exactly the same. Under the seven trumpet, we are shifting gears. Pay attention to this one now. Trumpet is to Israel. The same as the seven seals was to the church. Amen. We find under the seven seals that when these souls that were under the altar, they received their robes. They were given robes. Not that they yearned them, but because they were in dispensation where God was still dealing with grace and, uh, with the Gentiles. Now, you remember the souls under the altar. Those are not the bride, the Gentiles, that those that died in the seven church ages. No, those are not them. Those are the Jews. And they come in at the seventh trumpet. All right. Why do they come in? Because at that moment, God was still dealing with grace with the Gentiles. Israel is saved as a nation. God deals with Israel as a nation. All right. Now we are shifting gears. I hope you are. You are taking corners with me as I'm taking corners. Gentile is people for his name, not a nation for his name. Gentile is one person here, one person there, and then they make the body of Christ. And then the Israel is just a nation. They are a servant, the nation of God. They are not a people for his name. Now listen, paragraph 156, we are shifting gears here now. We have spoken about the Catholic and the Protestant as they are uniting. Here there is another one on the side of the political one and the persecution of the Jews. Listen, this is still part of the Armageddon. All right, the prophet will show you. This is one side of Armageddon. He has finished gathering his angels up there. All right, now. Before we get into this, let us just read one scripture here in the book of Revelations. Now, Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. And the sixth angel poured out his vial, the great river of Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried off, that the way of the kings or the east might be prepared, all right? Now mark the word river Euphrates and the way of the king of the east. And I saw three unclean spirits like frog come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, working miracles which go forth unto the king of the earth end of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Amen. All right. Now, 
I want you to pay attention to that part of scripture that you've just read. We are shifting gears now. We are looking at the Israel part. Paragraph 156, the message is called the Feast of the Trumpets. And when Hitler and them persecuted the Jews and did the things that they had done under that, look, they, who? Stalin and Hitler and all of those dictators, they raised up. If we had time, which we, to rehearse it, to some newcomers, but we've went through it under the same age that there has been in Germany and all the other nations, Jews that are scattered all through the land. Now you remember, let me refresh your memory a little bit. After AD 70, after the fulfillment of the prophecy of Jesus, of Matthew chapter 24, that when you see Israel encompassed, they that are in the mountains do not come to the city, all right? Them that are out of the gates do not come in. Oh, and to the women that give suck, all right? Listen, that prophecy was fulfilled. When General Titus encompassed Israel and he attacked Israel, and there was bloodshed in Jerusalem. And since then, the Jews were scattered all over the earth. They have never been recognized as a nation. They went to America. They came to Africa. They went to Europe. They went to Asia. They went to all these other places. They have never gone back to their homeland. Up to when the battle of Armageddon began coming. What happened? Stalin and Hitler under the hand of God. Listen, those dictators, they were raised up. Now, you, you may think that God cannot do such an evil thing. God used Hitler. He used Stalin. Amen. Remember, Jews, they had raised in the last 20 years. This was Brother Branham preaching in 1964. Last 20 years was about 1934. Yes, that was around the period when Stalin and Hitler were having their bitter persecution upon the Jews. Why? Why? The prophet is about to tell us. I've been out there in the old places, they burned the body of the Jews and cremated them. They used the ashes to fertilize the ground. Listen, the ashes of human being was used to fertilize the ground. Jewish children and women and everything. Then they tried to deny it, take them right out and show them what has been done. It's been a bitter persecution upon Israel because it's been time calling him now back to the atonement. Praise the name of the living God. Israel, now, can you see the souls under the altar now? Israel being called back to the atonement. By what? The persecution of Stalin and Hitler upon them. They burnt them. He's still under the atonement of a natural lamb. The real lamb of God is the atonement. And he has rejected it. That is Israel. And the blood has been upon him ever since. You remember when the Israel said, let, when, when, they, when Pilate asked, what shall we do with this Jesus called Christ? And they said, we'd rather have Barnabas rather than having Jesus. And they say, let his blood be upon us and even upon our children. Now see, visit God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children. Pay attention, my brothers and my sisters. Thank God, there is a mystery. There is a saving message that releases us from all the bondage of the fathers. It might be some, maybe some of you believe in those natural curses. 
I don't believe them. When you meet the message of Branham, it cleanses you from all those traditional curses, all those traditional pain, all those traditional persecution. Watch your grandfather who did not know the message, whatever they did, God releases you from all of that. When you meet the message of the prophet, praise the name of the living God. Amen. Hear God visiting because they did not accept the blood. Even when they went all over the world, they never accepted the blood. How perfect then the seventh trumpet and the seven still is perfectly together. The persecution upon the Jews. Paragraph 159. Note in Revelation chapter 9 and 13 verse. Note is real close. Under the sixth trumpet. Revelation 9 and 13. Under the sixth trumpet. Note. There were 200,000 horsemen. All right. We are speaking about. Oh my. We are speaking about Armageddon. Here is the prophet outlining to you. Israel persecution was part of Armageddon. Amen. That now, there was 200,000 horsemen that were being bound in the Uva Euphrates. Are, are you paying attention? In the river Euphrates. Now, we have read that. You remember the scripture that you've read there in Revelation 9, 13. 200,000 horsemen. Listen, pay attention to this. They were bound on river Euphrates. They are now turned loose under the sixth trumpet. Now, there is no 2,000 horsemen in the world, but there are 200,000 horsemen. According to the Bible, now listen, Revelation, the book of symbols. When we are talking about these horses, the Bible, Revelation is a book of symbols, and the prophet is about to reveal it to us. Notice, there is not 200,000 horsemen in the world, but there is 200,000 horsemen. Can you see the contradiction in that statement? Notice, I want you to jot it down so you can read it. Paragraph 160, there was no natural horses. These are not... They wasn't natural horses. Listen to the characteristics of these horses. All right, so that you can tell me if, Brother Anand, all right, so that you can tell me if these are natural horses or not natural. Uh, Amen, is that yes. right? Now Amen. listen, what are the characteristics? They breathed fire. They had blessed place of Jasper and they had tails. And the end of the tail looked like a serpent. And a snake's, like a snake's head on the end of it, stinging. It wasn't spiritual horses. <laughs> oh, listen. These are, it, listen to this one. They are not natural horsemen, natural horses. This one that are marching up to the Battle of Armageddon, 200,000 of them. What are they? They are spiritual horses. Spiritual devils, chargers that had been bound in Euphrates all these years. What is Euphrates? What is this Euphrates? The prophet is asking. These are supernatural devils, spiritual devils bound in river Euphrates. What is it? What is this Eva Euphrates? Listen, the old Roman Empire being revived. Can you see where Eva Euphrates is? There it is where these spiritual horsemen, these spiritual judges, they were bound there. What is it? The old Roman Empire being revived. The persecution of the Jews. They had been bound nearly 2,000 years at the river Euphrates. Can't they could not cross to the promise. What is it? A religious sect was trying to get 
to the other side. Euphrates, you know, come through the Eden, but they were bound there. 200,000 horsemen. What did this river Euphrates? The old Roman Empire. That is where they were bound. And notice what happens. Under the sixth trumpet, they are now turned loose onto the Jews. The persecution of the Jews, the supernatural devils, nearly 200,000 years. Oh my. Hallelujah. Nearly 200,000 years. They were bound long ago. Back there. And now they are turned loose by Stalin and Hitler upon the Jews. All right? You remember that persecution? Them that I've read, the prophet records and say about 68 million Jews were killed in that day of Nazi, of the Nazi revolution. Well, the prophet continues and say, well, that isn't Roman. You say, that is not Roman. Yeah, you say Stalin and Hitler, they are not Roman. Why do we say that those supernatural devils are loose upon them? The prophet say, it is the same spirit. And they done the same thing that they did to Christians in the old pagan days. Now them that have read the seven church ages book and even the seven seals, what did they do under the red horse rider? What did they do? Their doctrine had solidified. Now, after the Nikea declaration, they had the right now to persecute them that call themselves, not by the creeds, but by the word of God. Them that rejected the Catholic doctrine. You remember that? Then that rejected the Catholic doctrine, they were persecuted. Under Augustine of Hippo, 60 million Christians were persecuted. The Catholic has never been indicted for this. Even today, they have never been indicted. Yes, that old Roman Empire that took the control. What happens now? They are being now released again upon Stalin and upon Hitler for the persecution upon the Jews. Now watch the natural Israel and the spiritual church as we separate it here now. They are turned loose upon the Jews. Amen. They are turned loose upon the Jews. Paragraph 173, the same message. Now he lose upon the end of the sixth seal these 200,000 spiritual demons, not horsemen now, we are looking at the 200,000 spiritual demons started in Rome, Germany, Hitler. Now, when you look at it, when I read, when I read it from a political science point of view, I read it from a, from a political understanding. But then God is vindicating his word by using these events. When the first world war, it ended, no one knew who stopped that war. The soldiers, they were in the army. They were marching in war, battlefield. And all of a sudden their commander tells them, go back to the barracks. No one knows how it ended. God instructs the order of the universe, if you've never known. And here he is fulfilling the scriptural part of this war, Germany upon Hitler. And notice the Bible here. They rejected. They never received. They received the power as kings. Yes, in the olden days, they crowned them as kings. But now Hitler was no king. Stalin was no king. But he was crowned as a dictator, not a crowned king. But he had power, political power. When you have political power, like here in Kenya, you can do whatever you want. You can take the country to war. You can declare war. Amen? Because you remember, 
Israel was declared a nation in 1948. In 1949, Israel attacked Jordan as, you know, because they are a country now. Now, and they had a leader, they had a prime minister. Now, we are looking at paragraph 174. Oh, the spirit of God is just moving through me right now. Just saying something here. Notice paragraph 175. 200,000 demons turned upon Jews. They burned them. They crucified them. They put the bubbles in their veins. They killed them till they did not have no more gas to kill them. They shot them till they had no more bullets to shoot them with. And they done everything they could do. They cremated their bodies and everything. They hung on the fences, children and innocent people. Why were they done that? Just because they were Jews. They were done, they were done that way. But God said, he give each and every one of them a robe and deserving as they were. Listen, they had not yet accepted the blood of Jesus. And still as undeserving as that, God visiting the iniquity of the fathers to the children. The children cremated. Their bodies hanged on the fences. They burned them until they had no more, more, no more petrol to burn them. No more gas to burn them. But his grace... All right, he gave each and every one of them a robe and deserving as they were. But his grace to blind them that they could not see. What has he done in the cunningness, as he has said? He come in flatteries. And what he has done, he is bringing the pro Protestant Economical World Council of Churches. Listen, the spirit of Antichrist upon them. All right? Everything that looks like Christ. What was working in Stalin and Hitler was the spirit of Antichrist. Politically. Bringing them to the slaughter. Just like how they did in the hour to call the bride. How? How? Listen how these horses are being... The 200,000 horsemen are being released. Loosed in the ecclesiastical church spirit. Yes. These demons, they were bound by the ecclesiastical demons, by the ecclesiastical spirit. This is the river Euphrates where the prophet is talking about. Now, are we interpreting Revelation 19, the whole of it to you? Revelation 9, the whole of it to you. River Euphrates, what is it? Today, if you have not caught anything, even if you have not had my sermon, what, please ha, hear this. River Euphrates, what is it? The Rome, Roman power, the ecclesiastical church spirit. That is what we are calling the River Euphrates. Lose upon what? They were not lose upon denomination. Upon the bride. But here you get, you get it. The bride will not get through that time, right? The, the bride is not going through the tribulation. Yeah. The church will not, not the bride. Can you see that? The church has gone through the persecution for the perfection. The blood of Jesus Christ perfects the bride. So the bride does not grew the, go through that persecution, no. You don't go through the persecution. No, you won't. All right? The prophet says, and even I can say this to them that are listening to me right now. Um, a man who chooses a wife, don't put her through a punishment. If you love your wife, right? You don't, you don't punish your wife. I, I wonder how some men have the guts to do that. She, she's, your, she's your being. She's your part. How can you persecute a part that is yours? All right? Which scripture are you fulfilling? Some, the Muslims say that they are disciplining her. That is, 
antichrist spirit. That is not in the word, right? You're behaving like a renegade. Don't ever lay a hand to a woman, all right? He's already found grace with her. She's found grace with him. So God has no use of putting the bride into the persecution. And so will it be upon the bride. And so it is on the bride. We unworthy creature deserving hell. But the grace holds us through it. Look at how many lost blind. How many sinners there are in the world. The hour that they got saved. And the hour that you see all these churches and glamour. All right. Now I want to move fast so that you can finish. Now remember, Jesus came here on earth. There was not even one hundred of people that knew him. Notice paragraph 189. The losing of this ecclesiastical spirit. 20 years later, after that war, we sing the, the losing of the ecclesiastical spirit under the seventh seal, the seventh trumpet to the Jew. Now, here is the calling out time at the sixth seal. When it is open, the persecution struck in the Jews in the literal standpoint. And here comes the persecution to the church in the ecclesiastical standpoint. All right? Ecclesiastical standpoint. It is now war. The Jews are persecuted. And now it is the church versus the ecclesiastical. When you're speaking about ecclesiastical, we are talking about the religious. Because the bride is already called. The Sabbaths are already over. The Jews, the all right, ready for the Jews to be called. Where to? The Feast of Atonement. Oh, the church, don't you see that? The Jews are called for the atonement. There is no more Sabbaths anymore. Now remember, what you are reading here, it is, it is on the grounds of the seven church ages. That is what you are talking about, the seven Sabbaths. Now, to recognize the atonement, not no more chickens or geese or what this. It is a lamb that is slain, slain for the foundation of the, of the Israel. Israel is going to know that. The hour that you are living in, the ecclesiasticals of the spirit, uniting together now, bringing them all to this big one slaughter, to blot out, to read in writing here. All right? In this nation now that these churches has to be closed unless you're with the organization. Isn't that what President Kagame did? Unless you've gone through a religious training. Isn't that what the Americans are doing? Isn't that what the Kenyans are doing? You cannot be recognized as a church if you are not recognized by the National Council of Churches in Kenya. It is a union. It is a boycott, just like the mark of the beast. All right? The prophet is asking you. Now, and do you see what the beast is? Yes, there you are. The mark of the beast. When you are registered by the National Council of Churches, you are taking that mark of the beast. Because what was the essential meaning of that? It says you cannot buy or sell. Yes, you cannot preach. You cannot preach the gospel. You remember when, now, let me take you back to the study of the seven seals. The prophet says they are buying and they are selling. A penny for wheat, a measure for barley. All right? And then he says, but the anointing, the oil, do not touch it. What is it? The Catholic began this buying and selling in church. Selling of the doctrine. Selling of the word for your penance, for your forgiveness of sins, for purgatory. And it continued and solidified. When they now bring all the churches together, the World Council of Churches, it's called WCC. World Council of Churches. When you're registered, you cannot baptize except by the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yes, you cannot. 
do anything religious, save by the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. What is it? The mark of the beast, taking it upon yourself. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. When you see Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, your sight should begin to know this is the mark of the beast. Here is the mark of the beast. Anytime when you hear anyone say, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, mark of the beast. It is a power, ecclesiastical power. Jesus said, it will be so close, like a real thing, that even if it were elect, they will deceive. Do you know there are some mission churches that have registered themselves with National Council of Churches? Do you know that? People calling themselves message believers. Pastors, do not do that. Once you're subscribing to that, you are dragging people into the mark of the beast. But he promised to have something here for us in that day that we couldn't be deceived. And that is the word and Christ to make it manifest. They are supernatural devils and see into the eye but you can see what they are doing. Notice, while that group is riding, making themselves ready to stomp out of everything, we won't agree with them. There is another group that is made ready. Revelation 19. The next time the church is heard, all right, from Revelation chapter 4, you don't hear of the church anymore, all the way to Revelation chapter 19, that group was getting ready. Remember, the trumpets are for the Jews and the seals are for the bride because the seals are about redemption. All right? And now, when, when from that period of Revelation chapter 4 to Revelation chapter 19, the bride is learning the mystery. The bride is being equipped from heaven. The time the church is heard, she comes also not upon exactly horses, all right? In Revelation chapter 13, chapter 19, you see horses, but the, those are not horses. We are not riding upon horses. He was on a white horse. There is one that is on a white horse and the host of heaven was following him with white horses. This other army, now listen, there is one army of the 200,000 horsemen and horses. Right? They have a definite number. They have been counted. They are marching to war. Those are red horse riders. And then there is this other army. He does not have the number. He does not disclose the number. Because the other side, they do not have an ego. But on our side, on the side of Revelation 19, praise the name of the living God, we have an ego that can tell us the number. Now, let me tell you a secret about battle. I've watched some movies about battles, including Game of Thrones. Now, here is one secret. When they are going to war, when they are in a camp, the, a wise commander of that war, he will get spies. You remember how Joshua got the, the spies who went to Jericho to spy the city before they attacked? The same, same way you need to do as a commander. What do you do? They call them scouts in some, in, some, in, some, in some military settings. So you go and you start counting and you count and you know the number of your enemy army so that you can know if they outnumber you or if they do not outnumber you, all right? Number two, you have to know their strategy for war, all right? How are they planned? How are they stationed, all right? Now, we are able to know that because the one leading us is an ego. On our side, we are being led by an ego. And he has revealed to us 200,000 horsemen and the horse riders, the red horse riders. Amen. He has revealed. While this group down here has got 200,000 born at the river Euphorites, there has been Bound for 2,000 years. Also, listen, another one here, a bomb dropping here, Pastor Anand. What does it say? Also, that church 
has bound the Holy Ghost for nearly 2,000 years. Yes. yes. That's why we have this 11th hour workers. What, what, what fell at Pentecost? It never, it was only at Pentecost and then it came again shortly afterwards and then it died down. Why? The Holy Ghost was bound at the river Euphrates. When, when he bound these other charges there, the Holy Ghost was also bound there for nearly 2,000 years. How? Under the martyrdom, when they persecuted the Christians who rejected the Catholicism, back there under the church ages, and it's been bound, not at the river Euphrates. Listen, here the prophet is coming out again. Not at the river Euphrates, but at the door of creeds, of dogmas. Listen, the 200,000 horse riders, they are bound at the river Euphrates. Those are the antichrist spirit. Those are the demons bound at the river Euphrates. But here now, where is the Holy Ghost bound? By the creeds, by the dogma that the Holy Spirit cannot work in a church because of man-made system. But she's going to be liberated. <laughs> Hallelujah. She's coming back. What the Bible says, and those two meet another, one another on the battleground. Lucifer and Michael, once again, like in the beginning, they have been bound for 2,000 years, almost 2,000 years. And now they have been, they are now being released because they are meeting once again. Praise the name of the living God. Here's what you are saying, my brothers and my sisters. The battle has been set already. The battle has been set already. We have, here's the breakdown, right? This antichrist, demonic power, he was bound. These demons, these horsemen, they are spiritual chargers. They were bound in river Euphrates. The prophet says, this is the ecclesiastical system. This is the religious Rome where this demonic power were bound. And they are released upon Hitler and Stalin. They persecute the Jews under the sixth and the seventh seal. Under, under the, seventh, the sixth and seventh trumpet. And when they persecute the Jews, it is a call for them unto atonement. When they are called for atonement, that is when you're right, they receive the white robes because that happens when there is still grace. And now the Holy Ghost was also bound, not at the river Euphrates, but by the creeds and by the dogma that could not allow the Holy Ghost to work in the church. They persecuted Christians. Now, those days you could not mention the word Christian. It was death to just see a Christian. Until the revolution came that brought the Protestants. Now today they are all together. Now listen, it is now the religious creeds, denominational power, they have come together. This began by persecuting the Jews. They went into the atonement. And now the World Economic Council of Churches, they come together, bringing all the religions together. Under the mark of the beast, you cannot buy and sell. You cannot preach the gospel. But now listen, there is this other side now. They have gathered on the other side, and this other side, they have gathered. They are coming. It is Lucifer and Michael once again. All right? Now, we are going to see the commander of these two, we are going to start. The next time we are starting, listen, we are starting with, we want to know now who is commanding these 200,000 horsemen, all right? They did their work on the Jews. Now they're on an ecclesiastical system now, coming again for another showdown. And who is commanding the army of the Lord? Heavenly Father, may your name be glorified. Every day we are in a battle. 
We are engaging spiritual war in our lives. The scripture says you have never lost a battle. And if you've never lost a battle today, we are calling you on the scene. Be our banner, O oh Lord, in the fights that you are fighting, O oh Jehovah. Persecutions on this flesh here and there, Father, dear Lord. We call upon you. We call Amen. upon, dear Lord, your name, that you may yes. fight for us once again, O oh Jehovah. Help us, O oh God. Father, I pray for each and every brother that is here with every need that is in their soul, every need that is in their heart, every sister that is on here, waging battles against the spiritual demons. I command you, I command them, Father, dear Lord, that, Father, they will take charge and know that you've never let a, lost a battle. Help them to have faith to let you fight for these battles, oh God. Amen. Give them the faith to pray. Give them the mystery to pray. We know Amen. that one of the greatest standpoints of a battle if to, is to reveal who the enemy is. And when the Amen. enemy is revealed, Father, we have the power over them, O Jehovah. Amen. Claim the power of revelation today. May your name, Father, dear Lord, be seen. May it work on us, O Jehovah. Father, dear Lord, help us, O Jehovah. Thank you, Father, for the great revelation of your word. As we go to rest this night, help us to meditate upon this word. Teach us more, Father, dear Lord, as you want to teach us. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we do pray. Amen. May you all be blessed and shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom.